race one of Sail GP in Sydney, won by the Japanese. Whenever you compete in any series and the first race of the first event of the year, um, you're always targeting that from a long way out. Race one of Sail GP in Sydney, won by the Japanese. Got involved in 2018 and was there for all the sea trials of the boat. So, and I was involved in helping the designer sort of work on some of the hardware and where the buttons should be located and, and the control systems. And then I was involved through all the processes of on the on-water testing. Um, we spent a good solid two weeks there just trying to make the boat as, as fast as it could be, but also as controllable as it could be. Um, and the Australian guys were there as well. So Tom came over and did quite a bit of it too. And we also had Kai Hurst and Sam Newton there. So there was sort of, they kind of just took the experienced people in the fleet and said, can you help us get the boat ready? So a lot of the team said, ah, you're getting that advantage. But at the same point, we needed to get the boats ready. Then Russell threw a curveball at me and said, actually, Nathan, you're gonna get the last boat out of the entire fleet. And so we arrived in Sydney and our boat was like 70% complete. And we actually spent the first two weeks while on site um, helping the, the build team build our boat. So we were still in a commissioning phase of our new boat up until three days before the event began. So it was a bit nervous because we were a brand new team. Like there was, there was three of us who came from the Artemis America's Cup team and then there was three sailors that came from the SoftBank America's Cup team. So we kind of had two cultures coming together from two different teams and then the shore team was, was, a, was sort of from all around the world. So we were a very diverse team. I think we knew we were one of the top two teams, you know, if you looked at it on paper and if you looked at what was going on in the weeks leading up to it, the, our team, the Japanese team and the, the Australian team had the most experience on paper and were doing the best in all the training races. Tom actually had, I think, quite a bad start and he kind of missed the first jibe and I think he came fifth in that first race, which was a shock to, to us, but also a shock to them. And um, I do remember coming across the finishing line and, and, and telling the grinders at the front, the Japanese guys, it's okay, you know, we're, we're the race is finished. Yeah, yeah. Finished. done. That was mostly because they shortened the course, you know, we were meant to actually finish at the bottom. So we ran across the finishing line and I think everyone was, you know, still expecting to do one more lap. And I think when you're grinding, you're just focused on your, your job and you just grind until you, you're told to stop. The fact that we won that first race in the series was was massive, not just for the sailors, but all the boat builders in our team that were working hard with all the tech team to finish that sixth boat. So when we crossed the line, you know, I, I turned to Goobs who was on the wing, Paco on the flight control, who I've done a lot of sailing with in the past and said, you know, it was, it was a good job boys. You know, we've set ourselves up well now for the event and the season. So, you know, it was an awesome feeling um, to win the inaugural race of Sail GP. No one will ever do that ever again. It was a massive achievement for multiple reasons. It's been over two years since that first race and Sail GP's changed and evolved a lot. Um, firstly, the boats have improved a bit. You know, we've improved the control systems on the boat, the attention to detail on, on the foils and the quality of the foils, you know, they were all just coming out of the mold. Then now all the boat builders are sort of prepped them nicely. So the boats are capable of going faster. We have better control over the boats and the fleet is much stronger. You know, there is some really good sailors coming into the league and the sailors that were there all through season one got a lot better. And so by the time we got to Marseille at the end of that season, it was a lot harder to win races. And, you know, we're gonna to get to Bermuda and it, once again, the teams that struggled early on in the series have got more time in the boat. And so the top teams are getting less time in the boat. And um, it just makes for closer racing. So I just can't wait to get to Bermuda. I just can't wait to get back in the boat. We've got a new team. Managed to get Chris Draper, who um, is a fantastic sailor, and also Francesco Bruni to come and join our team. So we've got a lot of experience in, in the three of us. The goal really is, is how does three people who have never really raced on the same boat together work? You know, what's the dynamic? How do the decisions get made? And so for us, when we arrive in Bermuda, it's just trying to get that core group working well together and how do we integrate everything we've learned from the past and how do we find new ideas to go one step better. We saw how well Ben Ainsley did straight away with Goobs and Parker into his team. Um, 
you know, he set the bar in Sydney in 2020, and, and our goal is to make sure that you know we can set the bar moving forward. The, the team or the country that works out how to operate as a team, both on and off the water, is going to have the most most success in this season, and we don't have much time to work that out. It'd be awesome, and you know, I'd love nothing more than to. Not so much win the first race, but to win the last race in Bermuda. That's what we're really targeting. Very nice.